Hi there, it's Dr. Bernstein, and in this video, I'm going to provide you with some valuable strategies for evaluating online sources. This information will definitely help you when it comes to conducting online research for college level essays, but my hope is that it will also prove beneficial when you do online research in your professional and personal lives. As you know, there's a lot of great information on the web, but you have to think critically about the nature of your sources, whether they're for a college essay, a project at work, or a product that you want to purchase. You should definitely be taking notes on both the information presented on the slides as well as, the as, well as on the additional details that I provide. So there's no one right or rigid order to use when evaluating an online source. However, I've decided to start with the importance of identifying the author of the website and or the article on the site. Keep in mind that sometimes the author is not an individual but an organization. That is, a lot of times organizations might not provide the name of an individual who wrote the page or the article on the page because they want this information to represent their group as a whole. So don't worry if you can't find the individual author's name. You just need to remember that if there is no individual author listed that you get the background information on the organization. So uh, the background information on the organization. Um, so that's what you would be going on. Next, you should figure out why you should trust this author. Determine the author's educational and professional credentials, as well as how these qualifications give him or her the expertise to speak authoritatively about the subject. Sometimes elementary school children create good online presentations, but you shouldn't be quoting from them in your college level essays. Also, Due to the fact that the internet allows people to publish basically whatever they want, there are often people publishing articles and essays even though they have no true expertise in the area. So you really want to figure out you know, why you should be trusting this author. Um, and if there's no individual author listed, you should assess the organization or the institution's credentials. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And obviously, don't use this source in a college level essay if you cannot find this information or if it's not clear what makes this source trustworthy. Okay, you also need to assess the nature of the website by figuring out if it was established to promote a particular viewpoint or turn a financial profit. What's most important is that you understand where your source is coming from. If your source promotes a particular social or political agenda or advocates a cause, you want to be aware of this bias. You should be aware of this bias in your day-to-day -day life. When you're listening to the news, when you're, you're watching the news, when you're listening to the radio, you should be thinking about where this person is coming from, where this group is coming from. Are they devoted to presenting information in as neutral and objective a manner as possible? That's a question you should ask yourself. Uh, or is this group or individual or news organization devoted to presenting information from a particular viewpoint? Um, because that colors the way information is presented. Um, so if you're going to quote this online source, um, it might also be wise to mention the slant in the body of your essay. For instance, if you're writing an essay on a political issue related to our current economic climate and find good information on a site run by liberal Democrats, you might want to say something like, according to X, whatever the name of the site is, which focuses on economic issues from a liberal Democratic point of view, and then have your quote. So what you're doing by having this information in your sentence is you're letting the reader know something about the nature of your source. And 
depending on the nature of your product, project, you might want to balance out your research by incorporating the insights of the opposing group or another group that comes from the issue from a different standpoint. So it's very important to be aware of where you're getting, aware of the bias or the slant of your source, if there is one, and I recommend trying to incorporate briefly some of that information into your essay so you're letting the reader know something about why they should be trusting this source and um, where the source is coming from. If you're, and let me give you another example because this is a this is not just about your sources bias but also maybe where it's published. So say you're writing an essay about the effects that post-traumatic stress disorder has on families. You might come across a blog that's a blog is a web log and it's there usually if you're familiar with blogs you know that they're usually sort of like an online diary they're not or a journal they're not um, very, they're not always very formal and they tend to have a more personal slant so you might come across a blog that's written by a mother whose daughter has terrible post-traumatic stress disorder due to her service in Afghanistan now this mother clearly is not neutral she's writing the blog about her experience as the mother of a child with this disorder but you might be able to incorporate a quote or two from her um, own experience to add vivid details to your essay now in your essay you'd also want to mention some background information on the mother and the nature of the blog and you wouldn't want to rely solely on her information so you'd want to make sure that in your essay have other more scholarly sources in addition if you find statistics on this blog you'd want to do more research to make sure that they're correct okay another thing you should think about is um, determining if the site is a federal agency that means it has a .gov site or is a .gov site or a nonprofit which usually ends in .org an educational institute uh, that's .edu or a company .com I can't speak for all professors but I can say that many of us are inclined to consider .gov and .edu sites and sometimes .org sites as more trustworthy and appropriate than .com sites and this is where things get frustrating for students because you know some .com sites might be appropriate to quote from in your essay but you really have to think critically and be prepared to explain why um, so keep in mind there are a couple of things to keep in mind uh, keep in mind that in college level essays you shouldn't be citing from sources or from sites intended for elementary junior high school or high school students and you should also know that basically anyone can buy a .org site so just because a site says .org doesn't mean that it's uh, a true blue nonprofit so you might need to do some additional research another thing um, that the this is the members of the Harvard writing program point out if advertising appears on a web page you should try to determine the extent to which it may be influencing informational content so you should think about you know is it clear where the boundary is between the advertising and informational content does the data seem manipulated to serve the ads or are the ads just being used to fund the site because just because there's advertising on the site doesn't mean that it's not trustworthy but some sites <laughs> will have information that's really designed to make you buy the products that are being advertised so you have to think critically this might really come up more for you in your personal research on products that you might want to be uh, purchasing now this I mentioned this earlier about when coming how I was going to talk about this in a few minutes the when you're assessing the author one of the best places to go look for is an about us page 
most high quality sites contain some sort of about us page. Now it could be it could be called something else, but it's often called an about us page that provides background information on the organization or individual. And this is the page where you'll often find out or learn more about a source's credential. So you definitely want to look for this page. Now, this is where things can sometimes get tricky. That you want to think about whether or not the source that you found is appropriate for a college level essay. Sometimes you'll find trustworthy information on a website, but won't be able to cite from it in a college level essay. Because some sources are considered more appropriate for college level essays. It's, it's not a, there's no exact set of rules I can provide you with, but I can tell you that, you know, you might find good information on a site like about.com. But even if the facts are accurate, even if it seems like the author has, um, you know, some level of expertise, your professors will not consider the site appropriate for an essay. Partly because it's a commercial site, um, and partly because it's really designed for the general public, um, and it's not as sophisticated as most professors would like them would like it to be it's a little bit difficult to explain that but definitely don't be quoting from definitely don't quote from about.com um, now one thing that comes up all the time is this issue of wikipedia a, a lot of professors still say you absolutely cannot quote from wikipedia because anyone can add to it and um, you know, there's just this skepticism about Wikipedia. But things are starting to turn a little bit because some professors now actually are incorporating Wikipedia into their courses. For instance, they might have in a you know political studies class, they might have students write pages for Wikipedia and the professor will, you know, analyze them and grade them and assess them and make the students review them and then that information would be trustworthy usually. But most professors I know are still really not too happy about Wikipedia as a source. So, you can one thing you can do is you might ask your professor, but you also can go to Wikipedia as a starting point and then verify all of the information on your own. Like sometimes they'll point you to good links that you can quote from those links, but you can't quote from Wikipedia itself. Um, so sometimes it's a, a launch, a good place to launch from with your research. In general, Sources related to research centers, colleges or universities, government offices, or nonprofit, high quality nonprofit organizations will be considered legitimate ones for your college level essays. And if you're ever in doubt, you should get in touch with your professor, you know, get, get in touch with your professor and say, look, I'm looking at this site. This is what I found. This is what I've learned. You know, do you think this is a legitimate source for our paper? That kind of question actually makes you look good. You can also ask a librarian at the college. But this is where you need to be, you need to do your work ahead of time so that you have the time to ask these questions. So that's it for this introduction to evaluating online sources. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Bye.